Um, hi, and very warm welcome from my side. Let me adjust me a bit. Uh, very warm welcome from my side to uh, my talk, Apache PLC for XR, how I learned to store flooring and love the industrial IoT. Um, for everybody who was in the previous talk or session from Chris, learned a lot of uh, details. And if you if you saw an Apache Con last year, probably, we talked a lot about details of PSC for X and how it works and why it is so cool. Um, and today, this talk is uh, not so much about details, but more about the application. Um, PSC for X kind of opened up a new way, new possibilities for application to what we as um, IT people never did in that way before. Um, so today I want to talk a bit about what we learned during this way and what you probably will learn if you start with some kind of industrial IT projects uh, using plc for x um, So, um, who am I? Um, some people may know me. Uh, my name is Julian from uh, Germany. I'm pretty involved with the ASF. Um, one of the first projects I joined was the PSC for X project, I actively joined. Um, and I'm active in the IoT and our industrial IoT area, how I would call it. And I like databases, um, as you can see. So these, these are the projects I'm, I'm really involved in or try to contribute as good as possible. Um, Okay, um, so coming back to the topic of my talk, um, here are two things, two components I want to talk about in this talk. And the first one is Apache PLC for X. Um, whoever already, for, for all the people that were already in the, in the previous session from just, uh, they may know what PLC for X is, but I just want to quickly sum it up again. Basically, it is a collection of, uh, of libraries uh, to communicate with PSCs um, for two reasons. So two things are, I would say, rather new compared to all existing solutions. One thing is that there is something open source or with a business friendly open source license to talk to PSCs. And the second thing is that you have one common API, which is something pretty powerful. Um, I mean, it's totally obvious in the database world, nobody could live without something like JDBC because we need to reason at, at build time about what database your client probably wants to use. Um, and, and this is something which is totally, uh, totally standard in the industry. Um, and this is something which annoyed us. Um, and, and therefore, we, we tried to design a PC fix after that model, basically. Um, so here's a very, very uh, quick overview chart. So basically, you write your application, or we have some default integrations or demo applications, uh, which all go to the plc for API. And underneath the API, there are different drivers. And um, there's some kind of driver discovery, um, which works pretty similar to, to how JDBC works. Um, so that application programmers should not know too much about uh, the PLCs used or involved. Uh, they should just know the connection strings, basically. Um, and this this proved to be a good concept in a database world, ODBC, JDBC. Um, and this also is quite nice here. So coming back to my initial slide, we know what, what Apache PLC is. Forex is basically brings us to advantage of this common API and it's open source. Um, but the second thing I want to talk about um, in this talk is industrial IoT. So you may ask, I mean, all of you know IoT and other things, yeah. But why is there such a term as industrial IoT? I mean, what is different in industrial IoT than in regular IoT applications? Why, why is there 
even a separate terms for it. I mean, there, there are tons of IoT applications and not every application gets it terms like Internet of Health application or Internet of Mobile things or whatever. Only the industry gets one, one special term, IIoT. Why is that? I mean, why don't we, we take a page out of our Internet of Things book and look at one of those uh, well-known, well-established applications that are out there for, I don't know, all those things that are out there that are connected, sending data to the cloud. Um, Chris just showed us a pretty nice home automation, home automation uh, talk. And I mean, there's, there's a lot of technology out there and many people know how to do it with, with the right tools. Um, so what, what is the thing here that makes industrial IT a bit, uh, a bit different than, than regular IT? Um, and when I talk about the journey we did, I uh, sometimes refer to Alice. Some of you may know the book. Um, I like the book. Um, and when we started our journey to, to uh, the shop floors of this world to gather data, to do analysis on it, um, we were, of, of, uh, in, a, in retrospective, we were a bit like Alice. Um, sitting in front of this rabbit hole, considering if she should jump in or not, then she decided to jump in. And this is basically what, what we did. Um, and it, so who are Alice's, this picture is me, it's us, it's also you, that, because you will join me now in this travel through the um, rabbit hole. Uh, and what is the rabbit hole? The rabbit hole is uh, trying to do IT stuff or even open source stuff in the industry, in the traditional industry, um, which is a pretty crazy thing overall. And I want to take uh, you with me on this journey and just tell you some of the findings. We had uh, probably some, some short success rules uh, or some learnings at least we had. We're not finished yet. Uh, we will still learn a lot of things, but, but uh, I can tell you at least two or three years of experience in the field. So the first thing we are seeing here, uh, by the way, you see a lot of movie quotes here. The first thing we are seeing here is not it, but it's OT. OT, some of you may know what OT is and some of you may not. OT at least is not IT. And the first and biggest or big mistake you can do is to think that OT is like IT, but just something different. And for all of you, who don't know OT, um, I've read a slide. What is OT? OT stands for uh, operational technology, which is kind of uh, a term which yeah, emerged as an, an, an uh, alternative to uh, IT for information technology. And OT is, uh, sorry, I have to look on the other side because everything is, uh, is uh, basically uh, mirrored in front of me. Um, there is, OT is about industrial equipment. Um, and it especially means the difference to the traditional IT systems world. And um, there's also this nice term the quote is from Wikipedia, which is IT in the non-carpet areas or non-carpeted areas. And there's some truth in this statement because this is also a bit sometimes like the OT guys see us IT guys living in a comfortable uh, world where everything's nice and carpeted and they are in a rough world of uh, machinery. Um, so this, this is something which we will meet again later, this statement, but just to keep this in the background, uh, in the back of your head. So what is uh, OT about? OT is not about PCs, I would say, but it's about PLCs. We will come to that later on. It's about SCADA systems, about CNCs, um, about, you know, coming a bit to Chris, about building management systems, um, lightning controlled energy monitorings, and what the last thing, slow down for a second, transportation systems built for uh, the built environment. No, we will not do Apache BMS, I think. <laughs> uh, probably, if, if Lukas is here in the talk, he might be interested in something like that. Uh, okay, so this is what OT is about, not about 
some of the PCs sitting there uh, being used for production uh, purposes. Um, so now that was the term PLC, and the term PLC is pretty central for PLC for X, of course, therefore it's in the name. And um, what is a PLC? A PLC, you can look it up as a programmable logic controller. Um, so it's something you can program, of course, uh, which can work on some kind of logic and which is a controller, which controls things. Usually, usually it's the heart of a machine that controls motors uh, and yeah, all, all kind of other stuff. And you may be tempted to think of it being a small computer because it has a CPU in it. So of course it's a small computer. Um, uh, but it's not not really that true. I mean, there are several things that a PLC is really, really, really good at. One thing is at being programmable. I mean, of course, a, a non-programmable PLC would be <laughs> weird, at least. Um, but also at controlling systems. So they have fixed cycle times. They are so robust that they live for 20 years without interruptions. Um, but there are some things which a PLC is not so good at. And basically, it's everything else. So it's it has very few computational power. Every mobile phone, and probably even the old Nokia phones we grew up with, have uh, more power. Um, very small program memory. You may not remember the times, some of you may remember the times when you really had to be careful uh, if your program doesn't get too big to be able to, to bring it on your embedded device. Very few memory, uh, RAM memory. Um, and things like connectivity, this, what is connectivity and, uh, at a shop floor level? The PLC sits there. Um, so um, this is basically a PLC and this is the main thing we're talking with and it's no computer, although it has a CPU, it's no computer. And this is an important thing to note. I don't know if it runs Doom. Uh, runs Doom. I mean, it should be able to. I don't know if someone ever did that. Um, okay, so there we are. We are the IT guys on the, on the. I don't know from your perspective, it's the left side. Uh, the, the the nerdy guys um, um, sitting around having nice ideas what to do, and then there's the OT guys on the other side of this uh, nice river. Um, and what PLC for X does, so basically did, and also why we joined the project is um, it built the bridge. It built the bridge from IT to OT or the other way around. Uh, it doesn't matter what. So before there was all the problems I will tell you about now in the rest of my talk didn't exist because there was no bridge, so nobody invaded the other the other side and nobody well, had issues with this side. Um, but as PLC Fricks built the bridge, or probably another st nice statement would be open the, the Pandora's box. Um, lots of problems occurred. So uh, really an important thing for all of us from the IT side is to, to uh, realize that PLC Fricks only solves the physical connectivity problem just allows us to go over to the other side, but, but the other side is a bit different than our side here. Um, I will bring you some examples uh, that, that we, in one or the other way, uh, yeah, had like this. Um, we, we were talking with clients and they said, oh, we have these issues. And it was quite obvious that um, using some kind of machine data, you could be able to help them at machines were not even that old. They were 10 years old, which is not that old. I mean, the machines out there which are 30 years old. So 10 years is quite nice. What kind of computer did we have 10 years ago? Well, basically the same as we had today, I guess. And we said, okay, then let's go. And we had even this PLC for X thing, so we were totally ready. Um, and then the next thing they said was like, um, okay, here's the Aris. 232 connector, where's your port? And we were like, whoa. And I mean, probably some of the younger colleagues or listeners may not even know what this is. Uh, this is a thing which was pretty big back then. 
we use it to plug in our joysticks sometimes. Um, so our obvious reaction was, okay, what, what are we doing here? Um, I probably have to, to uh, sell myself out a bit again. See my slides to show. Um, yeah, exactly. I got to play mobile games. Uh, I don't know what the thing was originally invented for. So uh, these are situations yeah, that, that happen today. If today you go to a factory, then this is a conversation that could totally happen there. Um, had a situation where we said, okay, uh, now we we said, okay, let's focus on some, something which is uh, um, Ethernet based, at least, where you have this kind of plug going in the thing. Do you have it? And they say, yeah, okay, the new machine over there has it. And then we went over to the new machine over there and said, okay, nice. Uh, we can uh, we can connect the thing. Uh, just tell us the IP. And those guys were like, what do you mean? It's this machine right in front of you. And we were like, yeah, yeah, we know, but what's the IP number? This machine here. Um, and this is just an example, um, which is here to show you that it's not only the physical layer, but but there's more to it. Um, I mean, we can do the connectivity, but but uh, IT and OT still um, are a bit different. And there are differences, and I want to to. Um, Show you some of the of the uh, difficult difficulties uh, we saw there. One thing is the cultural uh, the cultural differences. So um, things like I mean, for us, for all of us here, it's totally obvious what an IP is and or a MAC address. But for some people working in the industry, I mean, they never use that thing, and. and Although they're the OT guys, they, they just know how to keep their stuff running. And um, there are very, very infrequent changes in the network. So they also don't use DHCP or something. Um, and there are cultural differences, things which are totally common for us. And if you, if I, I mean, if I would ask here and do a poll, like, do you know what an IP is? Everybody would be like, ah, oh, is he dumb or what? Um, but if you go there, I mean, it's just not uncommon knowledge. The same uncommon knowledge if I would ask you uh, if you know what Pofibus is and you would be like, what? Pofibus? I don't know. Probably a bus for professionals. Um, and those guys are like, yeah, that's the mostly used protocol. How can you not know Pofibus? Um, so yeah, that's a cultural difference, um, which we have to admit. And not everybody is as uh, IT uh, fluent as we are. Next thing is, we don't speak the same language. There are some things uh, which are totally common knowledge of us and which we think is totally obvious, like Ethernet, IP, all that stuff. And they don't um, understand what we mean and vice versa. Um, and I mean, there are many examples, uh, but one example, I, I prepared some example, one example I can give you. Programming. We all here do programming. Of course we do programming. So what is programming? Well, of course it's having your IDE open, some kind of code, Git or well, SVN in, in very rare cases. Um, so the left side, this is programming. And they're like, oh, what are you doing? They are writing a novel. This is programming. And what you see here is something called a letter diagram. And this is how PLCs are programmed. I mean, there are some ways to program this also with, with what they call structured text, which is something quite new in the area. But usually they use this kind of ladder diagram, which represents uh, electric circuits. Um, and this is what they mean if they say programming. So if they would say, oh, I can give you the PLC program if it helps you, and it's like, yes, yes, because you know all those languages. Um, and you're like, whoa, but this is not programming. This is drawing. Um, but this is this is one example for for the difference different word and different terminology, and another another thing which is which is even nicer is important. Some things are important, and what is important for us? Oh, there's a major bug. 
this is important. Of course, we have to fix it. And those guys don't feel anything at a major back. Those guys, those guys start to getting pulse when there's something burning in a factory. This is important, but not something in a computer. Uh, these guys are from the real world, and that's this. And now we can can go back up to the to the example of the of the carpeted area, and this is how sometimes they see the world. I mean, they have issues. They have tons of steel standing there, crashing, being loud, noisy, all that stuff. Um, and we have like, okay, there's a bug. When someone enters something dumb, the program does something dumb. And this is a bit how they see us um, sometimes. Um, so, so um, yeah, there could be numbers more examples of uh, what can go wrong wrong when, when uh, talking to these guys. But, but this is uh, just another example. The, the thing we have to understand is in a factory, there's usually one main goal, and this is to produce some kind of a product or parts and ship them out. This is what matters. Nothing else matters. Everything else in the factory is there to support this process, producing parts and shipping them out. Everything else is, yeah, is a nice add-on. So, so if they think about software or something, this is something which helps them, helps them do their process, but nobody cares about the software itself and even less than, than in regular IT. Um, and if the computer stops working, then they will just continue production and, and don't do anything for documentation or something because this is the one metric they are looking at every day is how many parts did we produce? Uh, which cycle times did we have? All those things. And, and if you say something like, yeah, but the computer crashed, so we had to, and they're like, totally off. What, what computer you, you paid to produce parts, not to look at the computer. Um, and this is really their mindset, and this is what they're coming from. And uh, this also, um, yes, yeah, has, has some kind of truth in it. Of course, we're always seeing the IT side, but those guys are seeing the OT side. Those guys are seeing production or not production. Uh, so important for them is something totally different than for us. So coming back to one of the original slide after um, yeah, showing you some of the, the things we, we observed or some of the uh, things we, we realized during this, um, this work, I, I initially said that the talk indicates at least that we have some kind of knowledge on how to be more successful with industrial IoT products now than we were three years ago, and it's totally true. And so I collected some pinpoints or yeah, learnings or whatever um, to, to uh, be more successful when you want to start an industrial IoT project, project or when, when you think about solutions for industrial IoT, basically. Just want me at myself again. It's more personal like that, of course. So, uh, yeah, and what Nick states there is totally true. I mean, that's the, the only thing which is interesting for them. How many parts produce? If you produce enough parts, uh, money is fine. If not, not. So one thing, of course, we hear that PatchyCon and the talk is named uh, something with PSC fix. Of course, one rule to be successful is to use open source. Um, totally obvious for us, of course. Um, but there's some truth in it. and. Um, you can you can come across some weird situation that we had even the issues that we had in some protocols like OPCOA, which is um, which which is an open specification, but there was an issue. Um, but there was an issue with an implementation inside the PLC because the pro, because the the project is still pretty new or the, the, the protocol is still pretty new, so we had to retrofit basically this back in our library to be able to communicate with this PLC. Because remember, nobody cares about why something is not working with your corporate area PC thing, because the PLC is always right. Of course, the PLC is running there since 10 years, so, and you are there since two hours. So, of course, the PLC is right, right? Um, so, 
Um, this helped us a lot to to uh, do fast release cycles, and it, it's not in the PSC first community that we're usually. Uh, I don't know. It, it takes one week after a new release until we are on our own for release where we already have the newest bug fixes in there or yes uh, findings. So for us, it's really important um, to to be able to use PSC forks like that. Um, and next learning is PSCs are not just computers in different housings. I already uh, talked a bit about it, but but really. PLCs are not just computers. Another situation we observed, or we observe frequently, is uh, a PLC exposed some kind of server for some kind of protocol. So you can think about it like REST, which which is obviously wrong. But but this is how you initially would think: Ah, oh, yeah, it's just a server, so I can just query it. Yeah, of course you can just query it. But I initially said usually they have fixed cycle times of ten milliseconds or twenty milliseconds. Um, which are very important that uh, they, they are held. Otherwise, they're doing a full stop because usually they start some kind of motor which runs 10 tons of steel somewhere and they are certain that in the next 20 milliseconds they are back to check if it's already close to the wall and stop it or not. So this is really crucial in cycle time. But if you send too many requests to the PLC because you think like, ah, oh, it's just a rest thing, I'm just asking, 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 then it could happen that the PLC slows down the cycle that much that it goes to an emergency stop. Because when those things were built, nobody thought about the case where someone with a regular PC just sends thousands of requests a second. Because that's nothing you would do in an industrial setup. Um, and this was a big learning for us because we just said, okay, let's just do, do a loop and ask this thing things. And but but really terrible things could be could be happening. The worst thing would be some kind of accident or crash, but the second worst thing would be a stop of the machine. Because when the machine stops in a production, that's always pretty bad. Um, and another lesson, be pragmatic. I mean, we are pragmatic minds, so we are always pragmatic by definition, basically. But um, simple things are more robust than complex things. So if there's a simple way to do it, then do it. Because things will terribly go wrong always. And usually when they go wrong, it's, yeah, something, something bad happens. So um, it's really important to be pragmatic and to, to really think about, can you do it even simpler, probably? Um, and it's something that those guys always do or always uh, also reason about. And be ready for adventures. Because, I mean, we had no project which ended the way we thought it would when we started it. Because, I mean, we have a lot of this waterfall versus agile, but those guys usually are always agile, doing everything on the job. If someone comes in, then they plug in the stuff, then they think about, okay, what do you, what do, you do next? I'm not saying they are chaotic, but, that's usually the way they are building their stuff. Do one step, the next step, the next step, the next step. And there's no one coming with an architecture diagram of, okay, this, this is how, the, how we should set up this, this extension or that thing. So um, usually those, those projects evolve. And another fact may be that we're opening up lots of new possibilities that nobody thought about. So when we're showing the data, they're like, oh, cool. Now we could also do this and that with the data. Um, and you're like, yeah, of course. So, so you really should be ready for, for adventures. Oh, first thing is, of course, in your mindset, and second thing also probably in your architecture. Um, so, um, as, as uh, yeah, we're coming closer to the end of my talk. Um, so the very, very short summary, probably, of what I can say you, when doing this IT OT project or industrial IoT, how we call it, is it's about programming or technology and mindset, even more than it's with regular IT projects. Because in regular IT projects, there is usually some kind of common sense. There are usually everybody has same expectations, uh, knows what what 
yeah, we are talking about knows the limits of technology and what not. Um, and in these projects, as two words come together, which which are really uh, yeah, from, have two totally different perspectives, cultures, histories. Um, you really have to be prepared to have an open mindset to and very simple things like don't think they are done just because they don't know what the IP is or they still use Ares 232. That's not because they're dumb. I mean, it's just because their job is something totally different, keeping a machine running and not caring about cables, computers, protocols, new shit. If the old stuff runs, then keep it running. There are machines out there running still on DOS. Why should you do an update? It works and it's air gapped. So what? Um, so mindset is really, really, I mean, those people, I think, have some experience with IT guys or consultants coming in there from their carpeted floors down to, to the production and telling them, oh, we know how to do your job better. And they all failed, of course, because it's a tough job they have. Um, and therefore, I would say it's, it's way more important than other projects. To, to have the right mindset and an open mindset. Um, and I mean, it, it fits quite nicely um, to an Apache Con. It's a nice uh, Apache Con summary slide to talk about the mindset being open, being, uh, um, yeah, um, helpful, open minded, all this stuff. So, this is, I would say, the summary of my talk. Uh, just always keep in mind that they have a different view of the world than we all have. This basically concludes my talk, and I am open for all kinds of questions, suggestions, discussions, or cheering with you on a beer. What? This silence drives me crazy. Uh, Chris, I guess this is something we can uh, fix. You can fix it. At least. So um, I will. Uh, there, I think there was some question of the of the of the slides. I will share the slides somewhere. I think we can drop the we can drop them somewhere as speakers. But also the, the recording will be available. And if not, just ping me. I mean, I was clever enough to not have some references on me on the slide. But uh, but you may find me. My name is Julian from the PLC Forex team. And if you look on the mailing list, you may find Chris first, and but usually second is myself. And thank you all for those compliments. You are just such a lovely, <laughs> lovely audience. Okay, um, I would say this is basically it. Is there anything else I can do for you? <laughs> well, at least I can make you see me drink one. Mm. It's going to be a very cold, refreshing. Mm. <laughs> so I guess I uh, will sign off on time that uh, everybody has some time to join the next session of the IoT track. Um, oh, let me have a quick view what this will be. Oh, solving IoT and edge connectivity with Apache projects. This is something I think we definitely should ha all have a look. So thanks everybody uh, for sticking around with me and all of you a good day or a good night and uh, enjoy this ApacheCon. Bye.